Another winter and another crisis with my koi fish. Safe to say, it's cold in Chicago right now. This koi pond is about to freeze, and if we don't do something fast, my beautiful koi fish won't live to see another summer day. And to be honest, they deserve another hot girl summer. Just look at those colors. So this is my outdoor koi pond. It is 1,500 gallons. I have some beautiful Japanese koi in here. These are all my smaller koi, some that I bought to grow out. Right now, you can see they are just about ready to start hibernation. During the in winter months, the surface of a koi pond freezes over, and the fish continue to live underneath the ice, as long as there is oxygen and that the water doesn't freeze all the way to the bottom. My pond's not quite deep enough. Koi fish can live under the ice as long as your pond is at least four feet deep. Mine is like three, three and a half, and I don't want to take any chances. At the start of the winter, their metabolism slows down. They begin hibernation, remaining completely motionless to conserve their energy. Today's one of the last warm days of the year. The koi are still moving quite a bit, but they are starting to slow down. And as soon as it reaches about 30 to 20 degrees out here, they'll all just sit right here in one group together. A lot of aquatic species do this, including crocodiles, which also hibernate under the ice but keep their snouts above the water to breathe. If you ever see this, you should never pull a frozen crocodile out of ice because the animal is in a deep state of sleep and disturbing them without warning can cause them to go into shock and die. And like a crocodile, you never want to pull a frozen koi fish out of ice. It could really shock them. Now fish as opposed to crocodiles prefer to do their hibernation in the deepest parts of lakes and rivers to maximize their warmth. This gets them closer to the earth's surface, which provides them with free geothermal heat. My koi will not be able to survive the below zero temperatures coming here to Chicago. These winters can be brutal. So ice may freeze all the way to the bottom, which will kill my koi in their sleep. And to avoid a tragic Shakespeare-like ending, I've created a plan. So we're actually gonna be setting up a massive tent, a 20 by 16 tent around the perimeter of the pond, leaving some extra room for a chair or two inside so I can still hang out with my koi fish over the winter. The tent will serve as a barrier against the cold wind and function as a space to retain some of the warmth, kind of like a greenhouse. The tent alone will not be enough to keep the pond from freezing. I'll also be ordering a massive outdoor heater to increase the temperature inside the tent. I got the idea and the inspiration from a koi keeper over in Germany, Alex Essel. We did a tour of his koi pond over in Germany, and this is what he does over the winter to keep his koi pond warm. So I've decided to take this marvel of German engineering and the American brain cells I have and combine it into creating the world's biggest igloo, I mean, koi tent. Now we need to get this done in the next few days because next week it's supposed to get down to zero degrees, which would make my pond an icy death trap for my fish. So to start the process, I brought in some backup. My friends, Sam, Ben, and Yanni. All right, gentlemen, I brought you all here today because I need some help winterizing the koi pond. Do you have uh, permits? Presidential candidate Ben Weiberg is in the house or I guess outside the house. Maybe you and I get both this one together. I don't even have to do anything. This is great. These are our tools for the day. <laughs> well, let me go get some bigger ones. If you guys can get this done in the next hour, I will get you all some pizza. While the guys started assembling, I had to clear the ground and cut down these tall plants that died in the fall. They're perennials though, so don't worry. They will grow right back in the spring. Oh, the landmines in the grass. For those of you that keep up with this channel, you're probably wondering why don't you just move the koi fish indoors to your indoor koi pond that you built? I currently have plans to turn that pond into an Amazonian tank with more monster fish. And so I decided I wanted to find some solution for the koi fish to be able to live outside, which from what I've also found, they really do prefer as opposed to an indoor pond, even if that means they have to endure a few winter months. But I do want to build a bigger outdoor pond, one so deep that I wouldn't have to worry about the koi fish during those winter months. I'm hoping Greg Whitstock, the pond guy, and Ed, the pond professor, can help me build one next summer. As Greg always says, big, bigger, biggest. If you want to see that happen, make sure to comment down below, build a bigger pond, and tag Greg Whitstock, the pond guy, or Ed, the pond professor, so that we can convince them to help me build a bigger outdoor pond. This whole structure here is about to become erect, meaning above our heads. There's about to be falling object hazard, and we need some PPE. All right, boys. Here y'all go. Nice. All right, open the drill. Let's go. <laughs> you guys are a hazard to each other. This is good look for your campaign. This is what the people like to see. Of course. People need to see that their elected officials will do the work for them. The boys were struggling a little bit, but I had faith that they were going to figure it out. Some might say this isn't rocket science, but <laughs> look at the instructions on this next step. This is wild. It goes from this to this. This is ridiculous. Hey, we got two Yannis in the house. 
the sun is going down and even though we aren't gonna be able to finish the whole project today, we do at least need to get the tent set up by the end of the day. I won't be able to do that tomorrow without the boys. Good thing I have a helmet. Yow! The best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. All right, three, two, one. Oh, mama! Who's the caboose? Two left, two left. <laughs> Hold on, we got a turn, ready? All right, we can roll now, boys. It's like that parachute game in gym class. Somebody get into it. <laughs> now what? You know, I was hoping it would become more obvious once we did this. I think it goes out one I more. I think there's more, yeah. All right. Look at that. Well done. We got the structure set up and the cover over the top. The next step is install the support pole. I need to go a little further. Yeah, we're close. In that hole. We were able to find a tent that was not only big enough to fit around the entire pond, but also had these big clear windows. These sides actually roll up so that the koi can get natural sunlight all winter. Like humans, koi fish benefit from a lot of natural sunlight. Not only is it good for their health, but it actually makes the color of their scales brighter and more vibrant. George! George, you gotta get me out of here, man. I don't like being in here with them. We got the tent up and over the pond, but we ran into a bit of a problem. Some of the spots of the tent were not touching the ground, causing openings for cold air to come in. The ground around the pond isn't particularly level, so I had to dig some holes to level the legs out, and I added sandbags to make sure that the wind couldn't sweep it away. Chicago is the windy city. It's time to put the tent to the test to see if it can withstand the Chicago winds. Look at them, they're so excited. <laughs> Once we warm it up in here, they'll be swimming and happy. All right, well done, boys. Pizza. Oh, pizza time. Good work, thanks for your help. First part of the renovation complete. This is either gonna be the thing that burns my whole house down or keeps my koi warm during the winter. After about 12 hours of running this heater, we very quickly realized that this was not going to be a sufficient solution for our problem. To be honest, I'm not really sure what I was thinking. This is a lot of space to heat up, and after a call with Alex, we realized that we should just be focusing on heating the water, which in turn will be more cost and energy efficient, and over time, that water will also make the air in the tent warmer. So I bought a 1500 watt aquarium heater. They do sell inline koi pond heaters, though these are extremely expensive and they also consume a lot of energy, making it even more expensive to run that heater in the winter. So I just figured I would use these cheaper, more casual heaters that I could turn on and off as needed. These came with temperature probes, so I was able to monitor the temperature of the water. And after adding these extra aerators to provide plenty of oxygen and a pond de-icer to keep it whole at the surface open for that oxygen and gas exchange, my pond was ready for winter. It just started snowing. It's a winter wonderland outside. And inside the koi pond. You can see the koi are moving around. They're nice and warm and uh, that makes me happy. The water in here is actually 50 degrees. So it's nice and warm. My hope turned into nervousness when I heard that not only was it going to be zero degrees for the entire week, but it was going to be negative 10 degrees for four straight days. So tomorrow, um, I'm actually pretty nervous. Even though I feel prepared, it's supposed to be like below zero for four straight days this week. It's currently negative eight degrees. Let's go inside of the tent and check out the doing. So it shows that the temperature inside the pond is 46 degrees still. Boy, are doing fine. The surface of the water hasn't even frozen over. So even though it's really windy, it's still pretty cold. And here, the temperature of the water has remained constant at about 45 degrees. It's not even that cold. You can also see that the water is warm enough that there's a little bit of steam rising from the water. Look at these icicles forming on the beams. That is crazy. Look at the plants, guys. I've never seen a plant look like that before. Koi are looking good. I'm just glad that this is holding up so far. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click right here for the next video in this series.